There you go. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell if they're sad or happy either. I, th I think it's just a lot of emotions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so nice to have that screen right there. What? So I don't have to... Yeah. What have we been putting there? The you gauges. Got it. Dive bot goes there. All oh, engages. The gauges have been going there. <laughs> Wait till the last watch, last dive. To the well, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's actually <laughs> no. It's usually me being <laughs> selfish and wanting like big gauges there, <laughs> <laughs> and never asking how Sarah felt about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Give it to her now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Amber, can we get the ga the gauges and the big? <laughs> <one>? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I took ibuprofen before coming out. <laughs> <laughs> all month. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what are we doing now? Oh, we're still the same direction. 25 degrees. Um, are we good with continuous moves? Uh, I don't, to start off, well, Put in 20s, like, mm -hmm. it's gonna, it looks like it might get a bit steep. Yeah. So, um, you can definitely put in a 20 for now. Just put in 20 at a time and I'll let you know based on the sonar. Sounds good. But yes, you can keep it going for now. Okay. Yeah, we're going to be on the lookout for a good rock sample, but these have all fallen down the slope, so we're going to try to see where they're coming from as we get up higher. Roger. So has everybody settled in just yet? We're good in the front here. All right, we can go ahead and do a round of introductions. So this is the 12 to 4 p.m. watch. I'm your SPL host, Daniel. My name is Sarah. I'm the scientist for this watch for the last time. <laughs> and I'm Dwight, also a scientist on watch, uh, watch leader. But I'm going to hand that off to Sarah pretty soon. <laughs> oh, scary. <laughs> uh, you good. got it. I'm going to have control over four computers. <laughs> Just kidding, but... I am Loopy. I am the data logger for this watch. I am the other Sarah, but I am the Atlanta pilot. Uh, go ahead and zoom. Michael, the Herc pilot. Cheyenne, the navigator. Ooh. And mid zoom, I'm I'm Amber, yeah, the video boo. engineer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's kind of interesting. Bamboo holding on for dear life. Um, good here, thank you. Okay, full wide. So did everyone see that crab they caught? Oh yeah. Mm hmm We saw a couple of those crabs on our last watch. The uh, decorator crabs, carrier crabs. What yeah. was it uh, carrying when they cl collected it? I missed it. A um, anemone? No, zoanthid. Yeah, it's a which is a type uh, of coral. Zoanthid. Nigerian. What's the distance mm -hmm. to the top of the mound, Cheyenne? Another anemone. Roughly. Uh, about four hundred meters or five, four fifty-five. Oh well, wow. okay. Yeah, we don't. We're not in a rush to get up there. <laughs> Is that that's our last waypoint? I think so. Oh yeah, we've got we got a lot of time. Then. Yeah, we'll see how we do and if we can make it to the end of the watch. But 
Go ahead and zoom. Are we? We're supposed to be recovering, leaving bottom at seventeen thirty now, right? <laughs> um, it's going to be flexible, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll probably modify it Ooh. before the end of our watch here. Okay. Dead sponge with stuff on it. How are we doing on samples? Bamboo. Um, we have quite uh, a few samples. Uh, with uh, we still have a bunch of like plus, cool. uh, slope jars that we can use. They got um, one background eDNA and then a rest right. of like, high diversity. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, they got one push core. Couple empty bio boxes. Yeah, we have like one, two, two of them. Okay. Uh, we have three rocks, a waterfall, aka coconut, <laughs> um, a primnoid, an arella. Lots of slurp space. Yeah. And then we have that crab, oh, which they said not to put anything in Omega with the crab. Hey Probably don't even want to open that. Yeah, they was like, don't even like, don't like, even look at it. <laughs> yeah. So, I feel like that would be hard to put anything in Lamba as well if you we don't want to open that. Ooh, a sponge, probably. A Rigadrella. Want to zoom? Uh, sure. They're pretty. Go ahead. Oh. Um. Well. It's a bit different. I think we've seen this one before. Yeah. Looks familiar. But not. It's not a Rigadrella. Uh. Mm -hmm. Some sort of glass sponge. Get it's it. almost like if a sponge were a really long pine cone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looks like to me. Yeah. All right. I think we're good. Thank you. Okay. Do we have somewhere we want to go after we get to the top of this mound? Sorry, can you repeat that? Oh, uh, do we have another? Do we have anything else we want to look at besides the top of this mound? Since that's the last waypoint? Uh, not really. Okay. But it should be interesting climbing up this slope, so mm -hmm. I don't want to rush it. Um, but it depends what we find. It would be good to keep checking our sonar for, like, outcrop instead of just boulder fields, you know, and move the ship in the direction where we might see more steep, you know, like steep mm -hmm. sided cliffs or larger rock outcrops instead of these boulders. Yeah. We could go over to one of the ridges on the side of the mound instead of this more gentle slope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sponge was some type of euplectelid. Um, Do you want to keep going? Another ship move? Yep. I see. So what kind of rock samples were you looking for again, Dwight? Uh, something that's uh, Loopy, it's emplaced one. instead of fallen. These all look like they've moved down slope from, uh, from up slope. So a place where there's like outcrop, which would be like the bedrock, not eroded away debris. Would you say these rocks look um, rounded out or are they just like originally this shape, like very rounded? No, the I think these have been modified, right, by 
um, the water and the currents and the falling. But it's tough to know exactly. Oh, a crinoid. We should be almost in the zone the where the, we start seeing sedimentary rock, but it's until you see the layering, it's hard to know. Yeah, we saw some really neat formations last night. Um, it's really cool. Hmm. Was that a shrimp on that crinoid? Um, probably. Uh, no, that's no. an arm. Oh, it looked like a shrimp to me. Yeah, we've seen a couple of these crinoids. Um, I know the last watch they were saying that they didn't see many, so I wonder what's different. Does the current out here seem pretty strong? Not at the moment. I was about to say, it looks pretty tame right now at least. Another bamboo in the background. So many bamboo, this dive. You can only wonder how many of those are like different from each other, you know, but. These you mean? Mm-hmm, yep. at home we're not actually traveling like this slope that we're traveling up right now is not the seamount this is a tiny bump on the <laughs> larger structure we mm -hmm. measured it yesterday and it was 50 kilometers so these are huge but we're just traveling a s very small part of it yeah this uh, seamount is really enormous so many different parts of it We're only looking at a very small area. Mm -hmm. It could be misleading because we're like, we'll be going up a tiny mound on a sea mount and you zoom in and it looks like, oh, I'm going up this mountain, but you're really <laughs> just going up like yeah. a Part tiny of dot on the yeah. mountain. Another primnoid type with a bunch of brittle stars. Can I take a closer look? Sure, yeah. Oh my gosh, so many brittle stars. Or ophiroids, I should say. Go ahead and zoom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's quite a few of them. At least. I think actually even more like nine. Wow. Yep, this is a primnoid. We've been seeing this one a bunch too. What's that spiky thing? Right in the corner. Is that an urchin? Um, where? Bottom left. Bottom left. Bottom. Oh. oh, yeah, that's an urchin. Um, good, good eye. Uh, we should be good here. Let me get an ID for that urchin. It's a very specific type. A uh, cider, cideroid. Uh, yeah. All right. We're good here. Thank you. All right, full wide. Super spiky. Uh, Histocyderid? Histocyderidae? Sorry, I'm like, yeah. Go all the way to the bottom, and I guess to the right. This one? Uh, like the the bar. Sorry, oh. it's like a weirdly wide web page. Oh. Oh. Come on. 
I have it pulled up on oh, my yeah. computer. Oh, okay. There it is. Got it. Sorry, I like forgot my glasses, forgot my laptop. <laughs> I should let you sit here. <laughs> you like driving the camera. <laughs> yeah. Histocideride. Mm hmm. Pretty. Can only wonder what those massive, massive spines are for. Almost reminds me of a cactus. Yeah. Maybe that's a similar defense. Yeah. Mm hmm. I think they, so they can move around on their spines, but they mainly move with tube feet. Mm -hmm. Because they are a kind of derms. Also seeing a bunch of unbranched, um, either bamboo or primnoids, just in the background. Which is also what we saw last watch. Yeah. The urchin spines are just extra long toothpicks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I told my friends that urchins moved, they didn't believe me. I had to oh. show them a video. Yeah, you don't, it's hard to believe until you like see it or you like feel it if you ever get yeah. to pick one up. Mm -hmm. That's not oh. dangerous. The time lapses are so cool though. Mm -hmm. They are. There's just these like, like spiky balls just moving just around. Just moving, on the move. Imagine if you play catch with one. <laughs> Another coral over here. Oh yeah. Another primnoid probably. Looks like, yeah. With brittle stars. Mm-hmm. You can just do a quick zoom on it. Just to make sure it's a yeah, Calyptrophora. So. Looks similar to the other one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Primnoid Calyptrophora. Looks like it's sitting on a pillow basalt. So we're still, s I think, <laughs> we're still seeing volcanic rock at this at these huh. depths. It's neat. All right, we're good here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, sir, keep the delta closer to 15. Okay. Um, Daniel, do we have any any jokes? Any questions? questions. <laughs> More from nodes. Uh. Mm hmm. Well, here's a question from the chat. Okay. If you could have a, a coin feature any aquatic animal or structure, what would it be? I think bamboo and another bamboo. Um, Thresher shark. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could see I could see a chana cops on a coin. <laughs> a Dumbo octopus. <laughs> you go a blue whale. Mm-hmm. Another primnoid. I'd say a brittle star on a um, uh, coral. Kind of like one of the uh, patches from a few years ago. Mm. And I was well, going to ask... Uh, that one looked like Angularis. What would you put on called? a coin, Daniel? What was that? What would you put on a coin? Oh, I said um, a brittle star on a coral. Yep. I figured it would be pretty neat. We had a patch that was designed a few years ago that looked just like that. So another question about brittle stars, are they consuming the coral or are they just using it as like a hangout spot or a nursery? So yeah, brittle starts. I would be. I would assume that ophiroids are using them more for like food capture. Uh, the sea stars we were seeing, like those goniasterids, I forget what uh, specific uh, genus they were, but those were definitely eating the corals. But that's. I think the ophiroids are different. Kind of jumping around on here. Yeah. Everywhere. 
Yeah, I'll I'll check sonar dime. What's jumping around? Oh, uh, just USBL hits for Atalanta. Yeah. Oh. They've been kind of iffy these last Ooh. couple of dives. I can don't generally move that fast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, ball of Soma question mark. I think that's one of those sponges we saw. Oh shoot, we got Steve said he wasn't so sure about alarms. Okay, that's not it. Not sure if Steve's still with us online. Yeah. <laughs> it's alright. I feel decently self sufficient. Oh, an Arinogorgia. Um that one looks like Bella, yeah. This one? Yeah. Zoom that. If you can. You can do it. Quick. Go ahead, video. Yep. I would say that's a Ritagorgia Bella. Because the branches are more concentrated towards the tip. Uh Yep. Smaller than the ones we've seen. Yeah. It's cute. All right. Thank you. Okay. Is there also oh, a difference in species based off the direction of the spiral? Um, yeah, I think that's a defining, yep. That's a defining characteristic for some, I think. I can't remember what is what. Um, but it's also like the, the diameter of the, the coral itself. So like, how big the, you know, the spiral diameter is, oh. um, how far down the branches go from that central axis to, like Magnus Viralis is more dense and it goes way further down the, that central axis than Bella. Um, that's what I look for. I suspect that Coral we just passed was a unstocked from Noah. Yeah, good stuff. Another slope. So I have a question for everyone. Um, back to the coin question. So, did y'all ever like go to the aquarium and go like in a little machine where you can get like a little coin yeah, from the aquarium? Yeah, make a coin. Yep. Yeah. Like the pr the penny press, or is it something else? I think that's what that is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I've gotten those. Those are fun. <laughs> mm. My my grandmother collects them, and when she visited us in Oahu, she dragged us all across the island to these random places so she could collect all her pennies. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. That's yeah. cute. Uh, Pair of sponges. Yeah, these Tons. are the same sponges we saw earlier. Uh, I forget the name. Uh, Want to zoom? A uh, quick one, sure. They're All fun right. to look at. Uh, Sari, nope, not gonna try it. I'm just gonna well, find we've, it. we've seen these quite a, quite a yeah, few times. Yeah, really say. cool. All right, good. Thank you. Full wide. Let me get the name now. I got it. You're good? Yeah. Sweet. So I have another question. Mm -hmm. Why did the fish blush? Blush? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> because it saw the ocean's bottom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> are you making these up? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, all jokes are made up. <laughs> but the chat, they come in with pretty good ones. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Man, Lula was on it. She knew, like, the answer to all the jokes. Oh. That oh. Was oh. Uh, I'm she not was, as yeah. good. She was good. I just gotta get a really hard reel for her, <laughs> and I'll have the most obvious answer, and then I'll be like, "Oh wow, I should have known." Well, I'm never good at riddles. 
sometimes when you ask those questions, people come up with a better answer than the right. actual answer. Yeah. yeah. Corbitellid, Corbitellidae. There we go. That is that lumpy sponge. Ah, uh, you got it. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw it before. I just couldn't remember the name because we—I don't think we've really seen that like on other dives or at least our watch. Um, so I knew it was a Euplectellid, but what? Wasn't sure. So here's a question for everybody. <coughs> mm -hmm. So what was everyone's uh, favorite moment during our expedition, during our dives? Hmm. It's so tough because there's been so many wonderful moments. Yeah. Mm. I think for me it was seeing that uh, jellyfish uh, a few yeah. weeks ago. That was like the perfect way to end our watch. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> really cool. another, oh no, that's Yeah, it's a chrysogorgid. I um, liked the china chops running into the rock. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty fun. Yeah, I think mine would be like this last dive when the crab was running. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that that's a like candelabra, candelabra shaped yeah. uh, bamboo. Let me find the name of it. Um, I think my favorite part was either last night with that carrier crab running towards us or the bones that we found. Like the real, mm. the being digested bones, not the fossilized ones. The, although the fossilized bones were amazing. Well, a highlight for me was definitely the first time seeing the sharks, just because I've been yeah. wanting oh, to see yeah. that my whole life, and it happened. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which one's the Oceanic White Tip? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Those are really cool. My gosh, and it's going to be like our last time seeing them. Yeah. Before yeah. the, before we ascend. Say goodbye to Francisco. <laughs> you guys will have to follow along when we're out on Johnston Atoll in about mm, seven weeks from now. Yeah. You can write in, say hi to us. <laughs> I'll be here, Leela, Lynette, Yay. TJ, Samantha. Yeah. So we have... Uh, our next expedition right after this leaves on the 15th for British Columbia, correct? Correct, yep. And that's going to be a mapping expedition? That's right, yep. It's about more than 2,000 miles from Honolulu to uh, Vancouver Island. I think it'll take 13 days, something like that. That's a pretty short one. A lot of these uh, yeah. brittle stars on these bamboos, mm -hmm. right? My gosh. They want the current. They want the height. So, interesting Pretty question. steep here. Oh, yeah, it's very steep. I like how big these boulders are. Yeah. But yeah, an interesting question from the chat adds on to what we asked uh, our most interesting thing on our Let's take a look at these has. corals. Sure. Yeah, let's look at this one. Sorry, Daniel. No, you're okay. Go ahead and zoom. That looks Paragoid like... Paragoid here, maybe? No. Perhaps. Um, could be either Paragorgia or Hemicorallium. Yep, That's always exactly. the debate. <laughs> I 
I would Spazing. say hemichorelium. They don't look like I they think so. Yeah. Yeah. The little knobs. Yeah, I think I would agree with you there. And then right next to it looks like some sort of unbranched bamboo. Oh, Steve's back with us. Yeah, I'm Steve's crawling. with us. Oh, yep. Yeah. All right. We're good here. Thank you. Okay. And then right behind it is a bamboo that we've been seeing a lot. Long oh. branches. Mm -hmm. Daniel, what's the question? Yeah. So what's the most amazing new thing that we've learned on this cruise? Actually, it's polyps look a little different. Well, depends who you ask. I think, I think everyone will have a different answer to that question. Um, you know, we're definitely yeah, learning or confirming say. our, our um, y you know, theories that these corals really prefer high current flow, um, you know, r steeper rocky surfaces in even overhangs where the current um, amplifies itself as it goes around these geologic structures. Um, um, for the depth, me, the depth range oh. is confirmed, kind of, for the sweet spot of it. Yeah. yeah, that was wild. Like going deeper and then just not seeing, yeah. like anything. <laughs> well, we saw things, but you know, it's very, very sparse, clear yeah. how different um, the depths are. Um, for me, I think it's confirming how little we know i mean i don't mean that in like a bad way i mean like how many times we've said like i don't know why that's happening i don't know why there's nothing here right. you know because like at points we were at like really steep you know walls like rocky walls where we would think that a lot of corals would be colonizing and like living it up in the current but they weren't um and just how many like weird things we saw at the deeper depths, like how many organisms we saw that we couldn't really place. And even now, like how many corals we're seeing that we don't really, like it could be a certain species, but we don't know. Yep. Can't really tell by just looking at it. So that's really awesome to me. Probably my favorite thing I've learned, yeah. Um, for me, I would just say everything in general. Because <laughs> this is new. like, yeah, this is like, a new environment for me. Um, first expedition, everything's like new to me. <laughs> so uh, getting to learn everything and really seeing like what's in the ocean is, has been like really cool and stuff. So it's been a great learning process. Yeah, and I'd say for me, one of the most interesting things I've learned is um, Excuse me. Is just the different roles that everybody has on the ship, and really what ocean science looks like when you're actually out there doing it. It's like you always watch documentaries, and you see people out in this big voyage on a on a high seas, looking at things nobody's ever seen before. And it seems like a fantasy almost, but to actually be out here and to learn about all the nitty gritty and what goes to doing that, it's very fascinating. And, yeah, I really learned what it's like to really be an ocean explorer. What was the last ship move, yeah. Cheyenne? Are we nearing the end of it, or we just keep going? Uh, we are 16 meters, so I'm just calling in um, 20 meter ship moves at 25 degrees. So yeah. we're pretty much always at the end of a ship move. Do you want to stop here? Well, I, I do want to get a rock before we get too high up this mound, just in uh, case the geology changes. These, I don't um, know. These rocks look pretty cemented. Yeah. So I just want to let this wrong. one run out. We got about yeah, 13 Yeah, we meters. could just keep looking around. I don't... Yeah. The, um, we also passed a few. Um, there's an umbilula. What about that one? Big yeah, one? that's pretty large, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, I'd prefer to get one where you s we see a lot of like ledge, yeah, rather than ra random ones on the side of the slope. And uh, we've we've crossed over a few, 
and then I regret not stopping. <laughs> <laughs> but um, maybe we can find another. That's okay. Leggy, we might leggy spot. We might find our coconut somewhere in here. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, Dwight, you weren't here. We thought. Okay, so at first I thought <laughs> it was like an urchin. Oh. <laughs> we were in this area. We were looking for rocks. I thought it was an urchin. It wasn't. Then we were like, oh, it kind of looks like a rock. And then we were debating taking a rock sample. Yeah. Ooh, shark. Not hey. a whale shark, though. And it was oh. a coconut. <laughs> Did you collect it? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> oh, cool. It was like Lila. an anonymous vote. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a shark. Nice. Compared to Leela's vote. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We're going to um, pick apart what's yeah, inside these, of it. Yeah, these rocks might be OK, because you see how you can kind of see the bedrock here. And I'm more confident that the rocks that are loose might have originated from these outcrops. So something in here. Looks like, like dead ahead, you mean? Yeah. Like that one? Yep. Or this one. Okay, yeah. It's hard to tell if they're attached or not, though. So maybe some of these are options as well. They look. Those first ones are looking attached. What about this one? Yeah. Yeah. Or this just, one? Let me just hop up there. Yeah. Yeah. Bunny hop. Yeah, these look better, eh? Yeah, if you can get one that has, you know, that isn't as flat. This one looks like it might be kind of flat, but the others have more width to them. Keep a good eye on Atalanta there. We're still drifting in. Whoop. Uh, which one was a... Try any, this one? Any of those, yep. Uh, that's coming. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Easy. It's another coconut. <laughs> I would say, yeah, it does look like the shape of it. What sample number is this? Pretty crusty. 192. How do you feel about it? Um, I sort of like this round bolt, this bowling ball looking one. The other yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, that one looks like an avocado. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Avalanche. That one might be. Yeah. Might not be much different, but that's fine. That should fit in the um, smaller bio box too, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. So Ooh, yeah, that's a good sample. All right. That's Thank good. You. Thank you. And that should be uh, bio there. box D. Get that camera. Box out. Looks like a tuna kit in the background, by the way. Nope. This one? It's going to go in D. Yeah. B. Uh, uh, wait. Nope. Is, is that the right one? Yeah, D. B? No. D. D oh. as in dog. D. Oh, yeah. D. Sorry. D as in dog. Sorry. <laughs> How does it fit? Oh. There it goes. <laughs> nice. nice. Good fit. All right. That was a slam dunk. 
So that was from 1600-ish, 1612, okay. I believe it's still volcanic material, but we'll see if it changes as we get higher. Come and up, 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 up. Can I reset your DVL? Yep. Cheyenne, why don't we pick a waypoint that's like to one side of the mound and then we'll do a backwards move and traverse across the top of the go. mound. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So like... Yeah, like head over. This way? Mm. Yep. Or even a little bit on the slope to the right. Um, yeah, a little down to the right a little bit more. Oh, yeah. I see, like right here. Yeah, the okay. ship should be able to move like that pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that, that actually works better for the ship. Yeah. like 35 right everybody ready to go yep sir yep. so it will be 35 degrees thank okay. you did you catch that distance oh, a lot of corals oh, here can. can we look to the right uh, about 300 meters okay do we still want to do 20 20 meter steps uh, yeah <clears throat> so here we have, um, what's it called? I think some big bamboos. Can we zoom in on that central one? Sure, go ahead. Oh yeah. Okay. So Wow. Pretty. So um Yep, this is a bamboo coral. Wow, it's huge. Bless you. And based on the uh branching, it looks like it's internodal. Yep. And then can we look to the coral at the coral to the right? I mean the left, I'm sorry. Got my directions messed up. That yellow one. That's one of one. the larger bamboos we've seen. Yeah. On this dive at least. Oh yeah, and then this yellow one, this is part of the S1 clade. Another bamboo. They're known for their like gold yellow um, color. It's really neat. And you can see how some of the polyps are attracted, some aren't. Yeah. Um, contrast, but all right, we're good here. Okay. Lots to be seen. Oh, and that's a primnoid, that white one. I want to say Norella, but I could be wrong. Another Umbalula floating on its stalk. There's a lot here, just like randomly. Like, what's the change, you know? Yeah. All of a sudden, they yeah. just are happy here. Just this little everywhere. oasis. So what's the texture on these sponges? If you were to like, say, grab it and squeeze it, would it be <laughs> like a crunch or would it be squishy? Like It's a crunch. Okay. It's a crunch, <laughs> for sure. Little shards of glass. Yeah, they're not. Um, they're not squishy at all. Well, okay. In the, in the way that they like move, they're not. They don't. They're not completely, um, brittle. Yes, but they. They're not, like, coral squishy. I guess like polyp squishy. Be a shrimp. Or like fish squishy. Actually, yeah, you're right. It is a shrimp, or just rock. Okay, just kidding. We don't have to zoom on that. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Um. Huh. 
have another one of those S1 clade bamboos because it's yellow. So where would you find like the squishier sponges that people use for like? Um, yeah. Would those well, be in like shallow reefs? Um, yes, um, but there also are demo sponges, which are, they're not always squishy, but they can be. Um, there are demo sponges at these depths, but um, to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure but I know a lot of sponge diversity is in warmer temperatures, I believe. There's like a band, um, there's a band around the globe that there's like high sponge diversity because of a temperature range. And I think that band is like, oh, I forget what it is, but it's like Japan and like that uh, longitude, wait, latitude, latitude. Yeah, that's where we move, north and south latitude. Yep. Look like they've been munched on or something. Yeah, I don't know. Nothing's around, so... Yeah, I haven't seen any be. sea stars. Oh, oh, there's one. Yeah, just <laughs> as I say that, there's one. There's one eating. Yeah, let's definitely let's look take a look it. there. Good catch. Is anybody using the stills camera? Um, I am, yeah. Uh, Amber, can I get that up where the little gauges are there? In that one? I'll try and frame that. <laughs> I'm gonna get it here in a second. It's amazing it's pretty the decent. coral stock can support the weight of that. <laughs> I know, they're so strong, right? Boy, he's devouring. Yeah, so this particular, um, Goniasterid, we've seen many times eating eating coral. Um, what specific Goniasterid it is, I couldn't tell you, but um, this is a pretty well documented. Go ahead and zoom. Coralivory moment. It's eating a. I would assume that's another bamboo, but I I can't really tell because that's like a solitary branch. Yeah. Unbranched coral. And it's just hanging off it. It's probably almost done with this one. I was going to say, yeah, it looks like it's just there floating. I know. <laughs> yep. Teetering on what's yeah. left. <laughs> it's really... Time to move doesn't on. Look like it's, it's like a stomach. hand almost just reaching down. Yeah. It doesn't look like its stomach is as engorged as the other one. So I would assume it's like almost done with this and about to move on to what's uh, beside it. Yeah, we got pretty good still camera shots. Yeah. Okay. So thank We're you. We're good. Thanks. Full wide. Um, yeah, I d it's so hard to ID these. Because this one isn't very spiky. But it also doesn't really look like a lot of these. But I would just say Goniasterid. Call it a day there. Or maybe it's this one. I don't know. It's tough. But yeah, many pr primnoids and bamboos. I'm not really seeing many others. Yeah, I was thinking like those, uh, the ones to the left of your cursor, up down. Yep. Yeah. But I, I don't know. It's so hard. Good guess there. I'd say. Oh, that's Valvatita. It's so difficult. Wow. Mm. All right, I think I will pass the watch off to Sarah and oh, I'll geez. be back. We want to get a rock up on top. We're right. saving a big uh, starboard side.
in. Big, mm -hmm. big rock. Yeah. So like 15 or more centimeters? Giant. Okay. Giant. Now we'll get, <laughs> All right. we'll wait till we're at the top and I'll uh, It's going to take like four people yeah. to get this rock off. <laughs> yeah. You put like four coconuts in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back because we, we might want to modify the uh, ascent. Alrighty. The, the uh, recovery time. Cool. So maybe we'll come up a little bit earlier and get on deck before dinner. Okay. Um, but feel free to collect more bio samples. You got plenty of slurps. Yep. And got it. Um, I'll be making the rounds and then I'll check back in with you shortly. Thanks. Cool. All right. See you, Dwight. Yeah, I, I'll probably somehow sit in between these. <laughs> or you just like reach over. I know. And type <laughs> and then take a picture at the same time. Unless you want me to move uh. over. Huh? So unless you want me to move over. No, you're good. Or, well, if you want to move over, you can. Um, up to you. I was just going to use this computer to monitor chat um, and do IDs. Just need to grow an extra pair of arms. <laughs> <laughs> do you need help with anything, Sarah? Like um, any still cam stuff? No. Should be okay. Yeah. Would you also mind showing me how you do it? You know, I'm just curious. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's not it's not difficult. Um, oh, can we look to the right there, at those at this big coral like meadow, sort of thing? Yeah. So, um, generally, when I'm taking a still cam picture, I will try to change the settings so we can actually see things. Um, <laughs> usually, I'll, I'll first change the shutter speed and then um, the ISO, and then if things are really still not working the f-stop um but it's kind of just like something you get the swing of it as you do it more and then you just hit the autofocus and click the camera and that's it um but these are a bunch of bamboo and some primnoids and another ooh star eating if we want to look at that quick and generally the camera won't take the picture if it like can't focus. So sometimes that's why if you click it and it doesn't save, that's why. But this mm. one, yep. That one's not too bad, could be a bit brighter. Go ahead and zoom. Oh yeah, look at this feast. Uh, hold on there. He's gonna have a field day. Another one with its uh, <laughs> gut out? Yeah. Digesting? Um, yeah, it's harder to see. That one picture we got was so good. It's like all of us on pizza and ice cream, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Especially today, last week. Today is burger day. So yeah, this one is eating a bamboo coral. <laughs> Looks like it's the same-ish species. Yeah, I'd say it does. I don't know what type, though. Just Goni Asterid. Oh, actually, this one's kind of spiky. I don't know. Same-ish species. It just looks like it's just, like, hugging it. I know. But he's really but eating, it's eating it. It's yeah. a deadly hug. Killing. A carnivorous um. hug. Mm -hmm. Don't trust hugs. <laughs> From a starfish. All right. Some good right. enough pictures here. Thank you. Why? I will put that on t-shirt now that I think about it. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I would do that, but <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, I like mean, you took the picture. I feel like that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look at all these corals. Like, why are you all here? What's going on? No, you know, they're just vibing. Truly. But the diversity is like, in terms of um, like family, mm -hmm. it's not not amazing. But we could be seeing like, like I said before, a whole bunch of different bamboos and don't even know it. So. Yep.
Another S1 clade bamboo. So many bamboos, it's like literal, like when you think of bamboo, how it just takes over everything. That's how I feel right now. It's just everywhere. It's one of them nights again. We're just like, hmm, bamboo. We don't have to zoom <laughs> in. Keep going. Oh, and this one's huge. Daniel, do you want to try the stole cam? Yeah, sure. Here, I'll move over. But yeah, so um, generally I think this is like a good you can try it here, but just click like the autofocus and then the camera. And then the camera. You generally don't have to wait. And then it'll populate over here if you scroll down. Oh yeah, you can uh, you can like hover over it and do the scroll bar or yeah. And then that bottom one. Yeah, so I would say that one's pretty good actually. Um, generally, you just make sure that you can see enough, a lot of detail and that it's not completely blown out. Yeah. Yeah, so just don't touch anything else. Um, but everything I touch is like right here. or And then I just hit the shoot button. Um, if you want to make it like more high quality, I guess, you can decrease the shutter speed. And then you can take another picture. Yeah, that should be good. Mm-hmm. And then hit it, yeah. Perfect. And just a note on shutter speed, be As careful because that can kind of blur your image. So yes. I typically adjust my aperture either with the ISO or the f-stop. Yeah. I was going to say, Amber, if you want to give a crash course on <laughs> <laughs> camera stuff, please. Yeah. Shutter is like if you have major action shots and you might be adjusting some of that, but I keep it pretty consistent. I don't know what you have it set currently at but mm -hmm. um i generally i have it range from like one over 200 to like one over 320 for those like closer shots okay i'd have to poke at it yeah to, to see exactly <laughs> yeah but yeah good pictures so yeah, so you don't want to put ISO past 4,000 just because that'll kind of blow everything out and make it lower quality. Yeah, it starts to add Yeah, so if you, want to, if you want to make it less dark, I would say increase the shutter speed. Well, or, can you do aperture first, like um, the f-stop? Yeah, we can. Yeah, so, yeah. yep, so increase that. Yeah, there you go. And now I'll try it and you can see how it's different. Oh, another fallen over bamboo um, base. Looks slightly encrusted, but I'm so surprised by how we're seeing like the same things over and over. Usually we get some sort of diversity, but. <laughs> Candelabra type bamboo. Yeah, so here I would increase the f-stop I mean, decrease it, sorry. Or other way. I guess, yeah. And then try it. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's really it. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Thanks. So we kind of see a, a bit of current going on. That probably is where we see such a big diversity of the corals here. Yeah. I'm 
just realized. <laughs> um, yeah, so generally, of course, corals need current to survive because they rely on nutrients and detritus floating in the current, uh, you know, for food. So, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the direction of this current is because I don't think it's too strong right now, actually. Um, but I would assume it's either down or up the the ledge. Because of the way um, we're on the side-ish of it. Are we on? Are we still going up the side of the seamount? Right? We're not on like a little outcrop or no. No, it's been the same since the start of watch. Same. Okay. Can we adjust the gentle slope? Wow. Hey, yeah. Cheyenne, mm -hmm. yeah. can we adjust the screen so oh, we yep. can see? Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, we we are, as Dwight said, wanting to aim at the edge of this. Cool. So we're going at more of an angle so yeah. it looks less steep, but no, yeah, right. same slope. Hey, Leila. The next ship move, I'd like to do 40 degrees, so we hit more of the edge. If everybody's okay with that. Yeah, that's, I mean, <laughs> I guess it's my call now, but yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Yeah. <laughs> We've gone about 290 meters. Cool. Nice. Making um, good progress. Yeah. And oh. we have... We have about 200 meters left. To cool. the top. Oh, wow. All right. Um, Loopy, what samples do we have again? Or what bio samples at least? Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> You're good. So we have a primnoid, a uh, norella, and then one more, but one second. Wow, this is just so much. We got a crab with Atlantic. Um. All right, we're trying. <laughs> It's an echinoderm, okay, cool. Testing out the interval. Ooh, can we maybe zoom on that if you're able? A little associate. Go ahead and zoom. That yeah, should be good enough. Ooh, looks like 
a little mollusk. Mm. Maybe, yeah. How can you tell? What are you looking for? I mean, it just kind of looks squishy. <laughs> um, looks like it's kind of just sitting there, but I'm not entirely sure. It might just be part. No, that's something. Yeah, that's just my best guess, honestly. Looks like unpeeled garlic to me. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're good. You can zoom out. Thank it's you. Full wide. There's also some of those coralivorous jellies on this. Lots of ophiroids, um, feather stars. True ecosystem engineers over here. So uh, the current has increased quite a bit. Uh, we're still going pretty good though. Cool. But spare warning. All good. Thank you. Floating by some sort of fish. Huh. Whoa. Mm. Loopy, can I see the sample log one more time? Sorry. Just want to check something. Mm. Thank you. Oh yeah, great, okay. My brain is like, do an eDNA sample, but there's not enough diversity here. It'll just be bamboo. Mm -hmm. um, that's okay, there doesn't always have to be a diverse community, just a dense one. Sweet. Thanks, Leela. Um, do we do we have time to do a a, a niskin or not? How are we doing? Uh, probably. You want to go back? On um, we can stay thing? here. No, it's fine. It's a bunch of corals here. here. Yeah. Thank you, Loopy. So, for those at home, when you say niskin, what are you referring to? A, so a niskin refers to the bottle, um, the actual like bottle that's used for eDNA samples. And what eDNA is, is environmental uh, DNA. So when we want to see what's in the community, like species and, you know, organism wise, DNA wise, we can just take these water samples. And basically anything that sheds off of like corals, echinoderms, you know, whatever is in the area. Um, any of their like feces, skin, whatever, will shed into the water column and we can take a water sample and then we do some stuff in the lab and basically we filter that out and yeah. And the process of uh, processing those water samples can be a little time consuming, but it's interesting. I was about to say, Daniel, you've, you've done three. DNA. Yeah, so we take Thank our got it. we take our water samples into our wet lab, and we have a filter attached to a compressor that we pour water into, and this compressor sucks the water through the filter to um, absorb the eDNA onto it, and then that water afterwards gets discarded, and we take the filter and we use that for our eDNA studies.
So we have a question in the chat um, to the ROV pilots. Oh, go ahead. Keep going. When you get a chance. I'm not sure if they heard. <laughs> Gosh, so much stuff. Another sea star, but just chilling on the sediment. Man. So we had a question for the ROVT from the chat. What's that? So we get this question a lot, but it's always nice for our viewers to know who are just joining on. So they wonder, they make, you guess it looks like you make it look so easy to pilot these ROVs, but how many years of studying and hands-on practice does it take to become a ROV pilot? Mm, I guess it's, I don't know, what is it? It's best to say it's like, in terms of, like it's kind of like a bit of a, not an apprenticeship, but like an ROV shift or watch or crew is like typically made up of a few people with a different degree, like level of experience. So, but I think, t I don't know, it's hard to say in general, like obviously you need some amount of time to get used to flying it and using the arm. But that being said, it's not overly difficult, I don't think. It's just pr a bit of practice, like maybe like riding a bike or something that aspect of it um, yeah it's tough to put a number on it I think if you were doing this for like maybe a hundred hours you'd be pretty good and the ones those of us that are at it for a long time like have thousands of hours so it's at some point they don't require that for this operate like this what we're doing here today um, so yeah uh, other than that uh, I don't know, it's, uh, yeah, it's doesn't, uh, just a bit of practice. It's hard, it's hard to put a number on it, but it doesn't take, it's not, it might not be as hard as it, if we think it looks hard, I don't think it's that hard. <laughs> I think it's just a bit of practice. I realize there's a lot of things that you all have to coordinate down there. There's more than flying around. That's only like maybe 20. Nearing the top. Cool. Thank you. Loopy, did you? I think you might have shown me this one. If it loads. Uh. Oh, yeah, there's another. Can we look at this one really quick? Yep. It can be a quick zoom. Go ahead. This one looks like the yeah. same one, doesn't it? So I think these are Amphitocella. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. All right, full what? They both are, or just yep. this one? Mm -hmm. Got it. I think they're, yeah, they're just really, yeah. Because it doesn't look like it has a, a bottom. I guess, like Sacrocalyx or, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think just Amphidocella. Good. Ooh, can we look at this, please? Got it. That, like, little grayish looking. Go ahead and zoom. That's weird. I wonder if that's another one of those blue flexorids. Nope. It's a Vector Gorgia. Just oh. kidding. <laughs> but they're always pretty to look at. Victor, haven't yeah. seen those really. I would say yeah, we haven't seen much of those. This no, at least uh, not our watch. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I, I just love the purple on them. I know they're beautiful. <laughs> Squat lobster in that. Flexorid? Bamboo? I think it's a bamboo. But, 
yeah, this density is just like baffling. Like what is so good about this area? This current must be yeah. amazing. It must be a buffet out here. They really lined up for it. Yeah, seriously. Hey, Cheyenne. Yep. Can we get oh. the... Thank you. My bad. Crinoid. Man. And they're just like huge. Oh, can we look at the small? Um, oh, I think that's just another Amphitocella. Oh my gosh. So small. So small. All right. Yeah, just a quick one. Go ahead and zoom. Yeah, just the little baby one. And then an Eridogorgia next to it. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. Almost looks like a belly button. Okay, <laughs> we can zoom out. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, um, I don't really know what to talk about. Daniel just went to the bathroom. Let's see, are there any questions? Any... Anything? Okay, question from the chat. How long will it take to get back to port after this dive is done? Um, I think we're, we're looking at three, three and a half days, I want to say. Yeah, it's like 3.2 something. Okay. Yeah, so we have a bit to go, but it's not too bad. Hopefully this watch especially can like get a more regular sleep schedule. <laughs> in that time. Yeah, mm. you can do that now if you want. Looks like you're there. It's all fine with us, whatever science wants to do there. Um, yeah, <laughs> that should be fine. <laughs> Did you see this one? It's like bottom comment. Yeah, um, yep. No, it went away. Um, Sarah, can you look at the high pack screen real quick? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I'm trying to line the vehicles up, like, right here-ish, and then yep. we'll just go straight west and hopefully yeah, see I the mean. top of whatever this little bump is. Perfect, um, yeah. Looks good. Thanks. However, if when Dwight comes back, um, we've gone about 200 meters every 30 minutes, roughly, okay. a little bit more. So this is yeah, only- Yeah, so it's not. Yeah, this is only like 250 across, so I didn't right. expect this taking us more than 45 minutes or an hour. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. We can maybe slow it down. Yeah. Uh, try oh, and look fishy. at more stuff. Yeah. Some sort of cuskill, I think. Um, yeah, we can do that. Um, call out to Dwight if needed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Great. Thank you. Um, can we take a, take a look to the right really quick? I think I saw like a really cool skeleton looked like just a moment just i think oh, sorry. Is getting a jacket on <laughs> take your time take your time <laughs> i think it's i think it's right out of frame anyway so don't worry oh well, someone said there was a hard coral why did i not see that maybe that's what was to the right
All right, where were they seeing this? I didn't see a hard coral. Yeah, I think it's not here. Yeah, it's just bamboo for days. <laughs> now, this is why we really need to, well, Steve brought it up for um, why more work with bamboo needs to be done because these could all be like different types of bamboo and we have no idea because they all look generally the same, you know? It's so tough. And that's why samples are important. Yep. Mm hmm. Uh, different kinds, not just snip. Yeah. So we have people who are watching us from all around the world. And this includes folks from the Czech Republic, Portugal and Italy, Australia, the Philippines, and Germany, and of course, the gold US of A, Canada, and the UK. So welcome aboard the EV Nautilus. And actually, yeah, I think those sponges were hyalostylus. That was what I was looking for. But there's so many different morphs of sponges. It's just so hard to see. Flytrap anemone on that one. Yeah, so we finished that move. We're all lined up if everybody's ready to start going across. Yeah, it's good with us. Good to hear that. Good. Okay, awesome. And then just to, uh, were we also doing a big rock sample near the top? Is that yes. something we had to do? Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's the idea, yeah. Man. Yeah, I suspect that these, uh, not all these bamboos are the same. Um, so if anyone wanted to do bamboo work, <laughs> this would be a great area to come back to. But um, yeah, I think we have enough bamboo samples. So that's why I'm hesitant. Um, but I really liked seeing those like bright yellow ones that were like underwater willow trees. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. were incredible. They're so pretty. Yeah. So it might be a good time to fill this time with, say, riddle. Is anybody <laughs> interested? Yes. So I have no mouth, but I eat many things. I fear water, but I love wind. What am I? Say it again. Yeah, one more time. I have no mouth, but I eat many things. I fear water, but I love wind. What am I? Fire? It'll be fire. Oh, can we look at the sponge? Sorry. Nicely done. The star? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I meant sea star. <laughs> Go ahead and zoom. Hey. Wow. Just sitting. Yeah, 
Yeah. It's always fun to see all the different types of stars. Mm. It looks like right. it's still in like, the family of the... Yeah, and this one looks like a... a mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> Apollo Naster. I see. I would say, yeah, do... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looks oh. quite like that one, so just do the genus. All right, we're good. Thank you. Another sea whip. Yep. Still looking for a rock. We are, but we're not quite at the top yet. So <laughs> we're gonna wait till we get like in this area, or yeah, I think got so. Got it. Got it. Got it. So here's another riddle for you. Mm -hmm. I have four eyes, but I cannot see. What am I? Oh gosh. <laughs> four eyes. I've heard this one before. Do you remember what it is? I do not. I don't know. Mississippi. Man. Uh. <laughs> M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S -S Four eyes. I was trying to think of like the spelling of something in the ocean. That had four <laughs> eyes, but mm -hmm. yeah, you're messing us up. It's got to be ocean-related puns. Well, as you know, the Mississippi River is still water. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. I think it's just a fly trap. Actually, we can keep going. No need to go there. Did you know there's Coast Guard stations on the Mississippi? Huh? Yeah. Yes, oh. I, I think you told us. At least told me. <laughs> yeah. Why Same is that? Fact. Uh, there's still. Um, buoys that is that need to be right there, like of. pink with yellow, mm -hmm. like in the middle, or is it like yeah, two different so ones? That, yeah. Actually, can we look at this coral? Sorry. This one looks like it's being overgrown by something, but yeah, let's take a better look. Go ahead and zoom. Oh. Weird. Okay. Very. It's like. Yeah. It's like pink. So then one side's yellow, but then it's like, oh, stop pink. Oh yeah. More so those are those are. Um, I think. Uh, oh my god! I always get them mixed up. They're either zoanthids or hydrozoans. Yep. Being overgrown. Pretty sure they're zoanthids though. But yeah, it's good to catch. It looks like it's a hemicorallium. All right, we're good here. Thank you. All right, full wide. Um, yep, zoanthids. Good catch. Some sort of parazoanthids. This, yeah, they're all the same. Mm. Parazoanthid. Got it. Mm -hmm. And zoanthids are also cnidarians. Um, yeah, they just they colonize usually corals like we just saw. And they take over in similar ways. So I got another riddle to stump you. As big as a mountain or as small as a pea, I'm endlessly swimming in a waterless sea. What am I? Oh, look, a shark. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh yeah, a shark in the background. Um. I don't know, like an air molecule? <laughs> an asteroid. Oh. It can be huh. as big as a mountain or as small as a pea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it swims in a waterless sea in a space. Yep. Yeah. 
I really like this one. What always runs yet doesn't walk, often murmurs but doesn't talk, has a bed but doesn't sleep, has a mouth but never eats. What is it? Water. Hmm? Is it Damn. water? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to the beginning of it, but the end is funny anyway. Sarah, yeah. That's Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a right mouth there. but never eats. Shark. Yeah, that's Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him eat once, okay? <laughs> yep, it's actually a river. A what? Oh, a river. Yeah, a river. Oh. It runs but doesn't walk. Yeah. Oh, that's not Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Come closer, little shark. Yeah, really. Taking a rest, apparently. Are we good to do 30 meter steps now that it's pretty flat? Sure. All right. You know what I really hope to have when we get back? What? A s'more. A what? S'mores. Oh, I thought you said a squirrel. <laughs> Some people eat squirrels. I heard <laughs> they're kind of good. Very true. I'm like desperately looking for different things to point out, but it's just, it's, it's all the same. Which is neat. It's a very cool thing in itself, but um. Is there any like environmental controls on whether an area of like coral or sponge density is like heterogeneous or homogeneous? Oh gosh, that's something I've been wondering this whole time. I I don't really know. Um, obviously, they both rely on current for nutrient flow, but I don't know what dictates whether, you know, it's a more sponge dominant or more coral dominant area. Cause we've seen like, you know, we've seen it flip regardless of what the current is like. We've seen, we've had dives where it was sponge city and we've had dives where it's corals everywhere. Like, um, like what we're seeing right now, but I don't really know what, what that flip is or, you know, how that balances out. Um, that would be neat to study, but I don't really know how you would go about studying that. Um, community composition and like what drives community composition and just in general biodiversity in the, in the deep sea is very difficult. Um, Brian has a few ways that he's trying to think about it, but like you can't really apply apply traditional methods to the deep sea because you can't, you know, you can't go out and physically sample. So it's like what as we're doing often, now yeah. is what you can't sample as often as you need to. Right. Like this is the best you're going to get to, you know, that sort of sampling where, I mean, we're taking a somewhat, it's not really random because, you know, we're picking waypoints, we're picking where we want to see but we're seeing like a little glimpse of what this area is like. And um, yeah, it's just, it's so different for the sea, deep sea and I have, I have no idea, but it's something that would be neat to find out because I'm sure this is, you know, this community I'm sure is harboring so much of the ecosystem services and functions like corals, you know, corals are carbon sinks and so are sponges and you know, it, Corals are also ecosystem engineers because they build, you know, niches and they build habitat and areas for other things to settle on. Like we see those ophiroids all the time and all the shrimp that are in the sponges and the corals. So they're important, but um, quantifying how much diversity there is is so, so difficult. Because once again, we're seeing all these bamboo, but are they all really the same? Probably not. They're all probably like somewhat different from each other, but we don't know until we 
sequence them. Ooh, let's look at the black crinoid. If we're able. I know it's kind of through the bushes now, but... Yeah, I'm going to try and get it through here. Yeah, whatever's good. Go ahead and zoom. Yeah, we can see it. Oh yeah, that one's like blackish purple. It's neat. All right, we're good, thank you. Okay, hold on. Unstalked, by the way. It was not a stalked crinoid. It was on top of a coral, which is an example of why corals are ecosystem engineers <laughs> and really important. So we're getting closer to the top now. Mm -hmm. Still so many corals everywhere. My gosh. Guess we'll just have to stay down longer. <laughs> <laughs> We're about 30 meters from the top. Yeah. According to the sonar, which is not always completely right. You said 30 meters? 30 meters, Okay, yep. cool. Thank you. Then we can look for our rock. Uh, yes, there's two rock people here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want to get a sample at the top if we can. Adam's in the in um, the forward lounge too, and he'll uh, he can be on the lookout as well. So I'll go talk to him. Okay. Ritagorgia, another Chrysogorgia towards the bottom. Okay, we're seeing more. They're all just hanging out. And to think that each one of these polyps is its own animal, man, that's neat. That's really cool to me. Squat lobster on that uh, S1 clade bamboo, the gold one. What are we looking at? We just passed it, but... Oh. This is a interesting uh, card set called... What is it called? I remember seeing these as a kid. Weird and wild creatures. And I, what? I never saw those. But and that's looking up some neat. of the stuff, like... I was looking up the uh, predatory tunicate. I saw oh. a, a card of that, and I'm like, huh. That huh. kind of triggered a memory, so now I'm going down this rabbit hole to see what other sea creatures we can find that are also trading cards. Have we seen any chimeras down here? Um, I don't think we, I mean, we passed something that I was like, was that a chimera? But we haven't, I don't think, to my knowledge, anyone has seen a chimera on these dives. Um, like I said, we passed the fish that I was like, is it? but we didn't get a look at it, so I don't think so. But they're probably somewhere and we're just not seeing it in our small frame of view, you know? Yeah. Because, hey, there could be an octopus in these crevices and we'll never know because it's tucked in there, you know? I need the Dumbo octopus to come out so I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> so we can Selfishly, all see it. I need to see it. <laughs> so we all can see it. <laughs> I'm yeah. guessing the last watch or so saw a massive holotherium because they got a check mark by oh, it. Oh, yeah. Well, I think it, maybe that might be like a check mark for like all of the dives. But yeah, we've generally seen 
a massive holothurian. Those log-shaped dark ones. So according to the sonar, this is the top. Oh, okay. All right. I know, um, it really doesn't look flat. No, but that's cool. <laughs> that's what okay. the sonar says. Okay, so. All right, let's see what we're working with. Yeah, really. Um, How far away is the waypoint? Uh, um, it is 100 meters. And is that farther than what you see in the s scanning sonar? Uh, scanning sonar is like uh, 50 meters. There's a little bump left. That might be it. Yeah, that, that would be like right here. So that makes sense. Because the sonar says that this is a little yeah, elevated. Yeah, let's, let's follow that follow that target and keep going. Okay. All right. Nice. Got it. We continue. Yeah, this... This is a lot more sloped than the sonar can we, says I'm sorry, is. can we look at that if it's not too late? There was like something that was spiky on the ground, but it didn't look like a weird anemone. Maybe it's just shadows. No, it looks like an anemone. Go ahead and zoom. Ooh. Oh. Oh, what's this? Oh. So this is a Serianthid, but it has some really long, like, I forget what, uh, it's a tube anemone, Serianthid, but those, like, lateral tentacles, I don't think that's what it's called, but that's what I'm, the, the tentacles that are sticking out, not <laughs> up, they're really long, that's why I was confused, um, okay, cool, yeah. great, thanks. Hey, pull wide. Let me get that free. Do you have that? Yeah, because okay. that's the same like the other one you said. Okay, sweet. Got it. Don't know what those long lateral tentacles are for. Probably better food capture, but why are they lateral? I don't know. Just an evolutionary trait of that. Um, I think it's a family. But actually, let me check. Um... Five percent of our job, too, yeah. right? Is we have to, there are the, well, generally always having like technical issues, just the <laughs> nature of it, and then we're doing a lot of monitoring right. here too. We're not just flying around; we're watching a lot of different instruments and stuff. Right, right. Are there any certifications or anything you need, or is it just about experience? There are some certifications out there in the world, but you don't really need them in ocean science. Like um, a good technical background is always uh, is traditionally like a kind of a modern best way to get into it. Um, actually, there's a more I should say like previous to some really cool like uh, I think Sarah wants to like speak to her school program sounds like one where they're like, you know, programs specifically aligned with this kind of work and other ocean science, um, you know, work that you do. Um, previous to this stuff or another path is, you know, technical disciplines at a, at a technology level or a technician level. So like mechanical, electronics, IT software, stuff like that. Um, but there's like more modern programs that, that kind of do the full gamut. And um, maybe I'll pass it to you there because I think like, your program is very much like tailored for this and other things, right? Yeah, so <clears throat> at Northwestern Michigan College, um, they offer an associates and bachelors in marine technology and that really spans from everything oh from God. like software programs, ahead, um, really a lot of like lake floor, ocean floor mapping, um, as well as ROV. Uh, experience there. Uh, the equipment that we have is the observation class ROV systems, but 
really learning to pilot like in the Great Lakes with the currents and the tether that gets pulled around by kind of all the conditions. It really um, kind of hones in your right, skills. We're good. Thank you. For uh, kind of a very, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, turbulent, more turbulent conditions could be. <laughs> um, so it kind of helps, yeah, hone in your skills to where when you come into the, to like this kind of position. So for Atalanta, for example, like it, she takes on a lot of the uh, movement of the ship. And so like trying to keep the camera pointed at Herc is kind of like I found those skills really come in to play here because um, there's so much movement. And so it's really trying to see, you know, how to position, how to kind of turn the vehicle um, to be able to get the best shots that I can. And, and this is my first time on a two body system like this. So um, those those smaller uh, observation class ROV uh, piloting skills definitely translate to this. But, you know, each system's different and it's really just getting behind, I want to say the wheel, but the controls and, um, and getting that uh, piloting experience. But, but yes, there are different certifications, different places, especially like oil company places, that kind of stuff. I know my cousin is an ROV pilot as well um, for oil rigs and stuff, but, and he has to do all sorts of certifications, but they're pretty much just laying lines and that kind of stuff. There isn't so much manual piloting there, but it's really different, yeah. Um. The, um, second. You might be able to get a good idea. The uh, closest thing to certification in industry is co is called IMCA, I M C A. I can't remember what it stands for, but they, amongst other things, they do kind of industry ROV certification. So if you were to go look on there, I'm not sure how much they would have online, but what they basically do is have these competency and log books. And if you could see any of that information that's in there, you, that would give a good idea of what's like what's totally nice. entailed. But that's not a ocean-wide thing. That's just kind of a subsection of industry that uses it. Yeah, getting into, honestly, any field can look different for literally everyone. Like, there might be some set ways for certain fields. Like, you know, like public health, obviously, you have to go through, like, clinicals and things. But um, I find for especially like ocean sciences, there's so many different ways to get into it where you don't need, you. I mean, generally you need certifications for some things, but not for others, like safety certifications if you're doing like, you know, if you're managing like deck work or something, but um, there's really like a million different ways to get into things. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think mm -hmm. when the ROV question comes out up here, everybody has a different story and it's the same for a lot of other roles too, right? Yeah, um, exactly. So, yeah, that's right. There's, like, many paths out into this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like, Daniel, you said that you wanted Go to be, you wanted to do, like, what is it? <laughs> Not astrophysics, but, like, you know, astronomy-based? Planetary oh, geology. Okay. Yeah. So, like, that's, you know, not ocean-based, but you're here. Mm -hmm. Also, this is really interesting. So, this is an Aritagorgia, but it's, like, not dense. Um, just put Aritagorgia, because I... Is there an associate on that? Yes, it's a shrimp. It's beady little eyes looking at us. Um, okay, good enough here. He looks like he wants to be neat, though. served in butter. <laughs> but yeah, like, you wanted to do planetary sciences, and now you're on this ship. Like, mm -hmm. that's, and you were working in the parks before, so it's like yep. there's so many different ways of getting into marine science in general. You really don't have to come from one background or another. Yeah, like one of our first classes was we were streaming, you know, Nautilus. And it was like, oh my Aww. gosh, it's the coolest thing. And that's when I was like, 
I want to be in that realm, you know, and how amazing would that be someday? Yeah. And, you know, two years later, I get to be here. It's just incredible. I know. It's so, it's so It is cool. a surreal experience. Yeah. I remember, like, when I was first starting out in my lab, I would look at, like, because, um, like, Okeanos, they upload all of these screen, screen caps and everything, and they upload them with, like, you know, because they also have a dual system, I believe. So they show the ROV in one picture, and I was always confused as to what that, like, what the equivalent Atalanta view was. I was like, why is, why am I getting this picture instead of, you know, like, the Hercules view? And now I, I get it. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. can we take a look at, uh, sorry. There's, like, associates on this coral that I want to look at, like, on the ends here. Go ahead and zoom. What are you? Like these. Oh, they're just more branches? No. Something. Huh. Are those new branches? Yeah. So this is a bamboo coral. And the way that it's branching off, oh my gosh, is like, it looks like it's like a knot, but I guess it's new branches. Okay, cool. We're good here. Thank you. Okay, full wide. Never really seen it like all crumpled up and knotted looking like that. Neat. Uh, so quick status update, we are, we have less than 30 meters of elevation to go oh. and we have about 80 meters, so we're at the end of the top of this feature. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. Flying. Go ahead and zoom. It's just on either one of the sponges, yep. is that what you're after? Yeah, 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 perfect. Okay. Kind of looks like a little owl. Yeah. Looks like a little tulip. Mm. So cute. Um, believe it's a euplectelid. Yep. I think we've seen this one briefly before. All right, we're good here. Thank you. Okay, full wide. Mm, confirming the ID. Actually, oh wow, oh my gosh, so much coral. Where did you all come from? Man. You know, this whole time that we've been exploring the seafloor and seeing all these corals everywhere, it reminds me of walking through the woods in winter when there's no leaves on the trees or branches and it's just branches everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's really surreal. Like, I can't even imagine seeing this in, like, Alvin or some other, like, submersible, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, so much coral. And these are all primarily bamboo and primnoids, but I'm seeing almost all bamboo right now. So that's like there, incredible there be to be something like this? Um, no, it's something else. Um, I've seen it before, I just can't quite place it in the guides. Because it has a very distinct, like, you know, like, yeah. tulip-looking shape, I guess, but, like, not, you know, it has that, like, I don't know how to say it, like, the cinch at the top, I guess.
I have a question for you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Have we found any predatory tunicates this whole time? Um, yeah, it looked like we saw one in um, in the still cam when we were taking that rock sample. I think we saw one. Go ahead and zoom. Um, it was kind of hard to see, and obviously viewers could not see it, but um, we definitely have. We've seen a bunch in previous dives as well. Oh, another hemichorallium. Hey. Love it. Is this heavy, uh, hemichorallium considered the uh, bubblegum coral, or is that something else? It is not. That is the paragorgia. Paragorgia. Um, I would assume that this is hemichorallium just because of the lighter color and how it doesn't... It's kind of like... I don't know how to describe it, but it's not as knobby, I guess. Oh, and it looks like there's a black coral at the bottom. Okay. We're getting somewhere with diversity. And um, I have a good enough picture. Thank you. Yeah, this sponge is stumping me for some reason. I always get confused in the sponge world. But um, some sort of glass sponge. <laughs> the one that we saw a, a minute ago. And this big, unstalked, I mean, unbranched coral is a bamboo. A sea whip. Oh my gosh, it just doesn't end. This is wild. Because I know for a long time the other watches were seeing like virtually nothing and it was all sedimenty, but I guess now that we're on the slope again, it's picking up. Yep, this know. is where the fun begins. Yeah. And in fact, we have seen quite a few uh, predatory tuning kits, and we do have a clip of it up on our YouTube channel for those of you at home who are interested in checking that out. And we also have a new blog up on our website. At the that time we took sample 193, um, it was like 23.9 through 23.10. Uh, 9 and 23.10. bamboo forest. Yeah, we have new blogs on our website about the whale jaw fossils that we found, as well as volcanic rocks we've cut, and our laser dive pod. Yeah, 2309 and then 2310. We should be flattening out here as we're 